Can you see me over this thing? <laughs> I'm going to make it as awkward as I possibly can. <clears throat> Helen is on my shit list. Seriously. Of course, I have no tangible proof that Helen actually exists. Um, let me back up a bit so that you understand. The morning of my brain surgery, I went through several routine exams, blood tests, and various pokes. I stumbled over to the weighing area and weighed in on a mere 109 pounds. Then I met with my anesthesiologist, who informed me that the possibility of dying on the operating table was very slim, but that I should still sign this paperwork just in case. I was then asked if I had a last will and testament, and if I would like to be resuscitated in the event that my heart stopped beating. Uh, yes, yes, I would like to be resuscitated. Thank you very fucking much. <laughs> After much prodding to find my veins, I was injected with something unknown that was probably in the fine print of whatever paperwork I just signed. A nurse placed a shiny gold operating cap on my head, and the gravity of the situation finally hit me. Can I keep this fancy hat? <laughs> I asked her as she sat me down in a bed with wheels. Absolutely. I half hoped that I would momentarily die on the table so that I could see myself outside of my body floating above the table because that's what I saw in a movie once. I wondered if I would end up in a state of semi-afterlife in which I had to right my wrongs before being allowed into heaven. I would make sure to haunt my ex in the process, probably de pants him a couple times in public. Hey, no one said you had to be nice in the afterlife. The ordeal, the ordeal lasted a good four hours or so, during which my cavernous angioma was removed from my cerebellum. My eyes cracked open and a nurse pulled a large yellow tube out of my throat. She had warned me about said large yellow tube during our terrifying conversation with the fine print paperwork. As, I, as she removed it, I muttered something to the effect of, Oh no, have we started yet? Shit, am I dead? Are you dead? She laughed and told me that we were both very much alive. My first two nurses, Sue and Ryan, wheeled me down to the anesthesia room, a precursor to the intensive care unit. How do you feel, Mimi? She asked. Good. Real good. I slobbered all over my gown. As I opened my eyes for periods of 10 seconds at a time, I noticed that the nurses were playing a nasty prank on me and had flipped my bed on its side and strapped me to it. Real funny, Sue. Real funny, I snorted. What's funny, Mimi, she said. You're a real jokester, you know that? This was probably Ryan's idea, wasn't it? What are you talking about? You flipped my bed on its side and strapped me to it. Why would you do that, Sue? We didn't flip your bed on its side. Is that what you're seeing right now? Yes. The world is completely sideways and also double, and I don't like it, Sue. I don't like it. I wondered which parts of my brain they had tooled around with in there and whether or not I would ever see right side up again. It would sure make for an interesting Ron Howard film, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when fucking Helen showed up. As I attempted to slumber, I heard a clamoring on the other side of the room, followed by excessive yelling. Helen? Sit down, Helen, one nurse attempted. Helen? Helen? Please don't pull this out of your arms! Helen? Sit in the chair, Helen! Helen's name was said at least a thousand times in the span of five minutes. Of course, I was so hopped up on drugs, it could have been 30 seconds or 30 hours. Uh, I had no concept of time I was on drugs. I craned my stiff neck sideways to find Sue. Sue? Yes, maybe, she said. What the fuck is up with Helen? I said with utmost seriousness. <laughs> Sue and Ryan burst into laughter. Here I was just trying to relax and enjoy my drugs and ice chips and Helen was ruining everything. It sounded like every nurse in the hospital was chasing her around the room, trying to keep her from crawling up the walls. How ridiculously rude, I thought. Didn't Helen know that the rest of us were in here too, just trying to enjoy some limited, pain-free, druggy bliss? I had had enough. I mustered the energy to lift my head just barely out of my bed. I waved off Ryan as he tried to give me an ice chip. Not now, Ryan, I'm on a mission. I tilted my head to try to find Helen in the room, and I said at the top of my cracking voice, Helen, sit down. Helen, sit the fuck down. You got this, Helen. My energy waned, and I collapsed my head back on the bed, pathetically, but also heroically. Sue and Ryan continued to laugh. Either my school again works, 
or Helen didn't actually exist. It's entirely possible that she was a figment of my drugged-up imagination. I didn't exactly see her, but then again, I couldn't really see anything sideways and double quite well. Helen is still on my shit list, because nobody that crazy gets away with that kind of nonsense, even if you don't actually exist. Thank you.